confuse you And make you feel like you're alone He can redeem anything that is lost because he's a redeemer. He's a redeemer. So when you're in that place, you don't have to wait until you see the manifestation of the redeemer to say, I know my redeemer lives. I know that he has the power to step into a situation and turn it all around. So what's my responsibility to praise you and to worship you and to acknowledge you and to allow the redeemer to step in and just thank him even before you see it, even before it's manifested. See, the word of God tells us that we're not to, to walk by sight, but we're supposed to walk by faith. And what is that? Knowing who he is. Knowing his attributes, knowing his strength, knowing his power. And that's why worship is such an important part of our, our service to God. Because it's saying, God, here I am. And I said everything else to the side. And I want to just love you and sing to you. Because I know who you are. I know that you're my redeemer. I know that you're my savior. I know that you make a way out of no way. I know that you're my healer. I know that you're my provider. I know that no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. I know that if you're for me, who can be against me? So I stand in that place of knowledge and revelation when I come into the position of worship to just say, I know that you're here. I know that you're with me and I will worship you. And Father, I thank you. I thank you that we are of those that will worship you in spirit and in truth. God, I thank you that we are of those that we will not wait for the good report to shout and to dance. But God, that we will learn to shout and dance even in the midnight hour. Even when it looks dark. Even when there looks like there's no natural way or there's no natural possibility for that thing to come to pass, God. That we would be able to say, I know that my Redeemer liveth. And even in the midnight hour, that we would dance like it's noonday. 
because we know who you are. And we thank you, God, because you're growing us, you're maturing us, you're pruning us, you're correcting us, you're cutting us, but then at the same time, you're coming with your oil and you're healing us and you're making us whole, you're anointing us, you're restoring us, because there's a work that you have to do through each and every one of us. And for that, tonight, we say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you clap your hands in gratitude to the Lord tonight for everything that he is doing? Hallelujah. We're so grateful, God. We're so thankful. We're so thankful. And in that same spirit of joy, if you would hug someone that's close to you, and as we bring up the lights and we're getting ready to go into our Bible study, I want to welcome you tonight to Rainfire Church. This is our midweek Bible study, and we're so thankful and so excited that you are here. For those of you that are joining us online, I know that you've been getting used to having more of a personal conversation with me on Tuesdays because we've been in this series for our online small group. But like I said just a minute ago, every last Tuesday of the month, we'll be bringing all of the small groups together so that we can have a time of worship and of teaching to, to remain in the spirit of unity at Rainfire Church. Amen? Amen? So are you guys having a good week? Are you blessed? Yes. Amen. Amen. Let's give God one more just worship of praise with our hands and shout unto God and just be thankful. Be thankful. Be thankful. Najee, would you be able to help me with the podium? You've been trying to escape way too quick. Come on. Would you guys thank God also for the worship team? Yes. Let's thank God for the worship ministry here at Rainfire Church. You guys did such an amazing and a wonderful job. Let's prepare to bring to the Lord our tithes and our offering. And so I want you to go, before you reach into your wallet, before you do any of that, um, I want you to go with me to the Word of God and go with me to Malachi. I'll never forget, there is um, a beautiful woman of God that goes to church here at Marine Fire. She's been with me a few years. And uh, she was helping me tutor my kids. And we were just talking about giving one day. She said, Pastor Joanne, she just said to me, she said, all these years I've been in church, and I would hear pastors say all the time, if you don't give, you're cursed. If you don't give, your tithes, you're cursed. Well, where does it even say that in the Bible? <laughs> and I sat down with her, and we went to Malachi, and we started reading the scripture. And so I want to share it with you guys today, because one of the things that we have been focusing on this year, at least I have been focusing on, I'm very aware that people struggle in three basic areas. They struggle in the area of relationships. They struggle in the area of health. And they struggle in the area of finances. Those are the three main areas where people get really hit hard. But guess what? Within the word of God, there are keys and there are um, principles of the kingdom of God that can teach us how to overcome in each and every one of those areas. So you can live a life where you prosper in your relationships, you prosper in your finances, and you're also living in good health. Because that is the promise of God. That is what Jesus purchased for us on the cross of Calvary, okay? So Malachi 3, Malachi 3 verse, uh, verse 8 says, will a man rob God? Now you have to realize that God had already been talking to his people, okay? In verse 6, if you go back, it'll say, for I am the Lord, I do not change, you know, so on and so forth. Um, he said in verse 7, seven, you've gone away from my ordinances and you have not kept them. But then at the end of verse 7, he says, return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. So what, I, what made me think about this today, because I was praying these scriptures the other day. I believe in praying, praying scriptures concerning finances um, because that is a spirit that I'm dealing with head on in this year. I believe that if the people of God that are assigned to me and Corey are living a holy lifestyle and that you're seeking God, that you should be able to get aggressive about your faith for finances for your family to experience a breakthrough in this area. There's no reason why you should be in lack when you're living in obedience to God. And sometimes you just have to get aggressive and say, you know what, devil, you a liar. You're going to get your hands off everything that belongs to me. You're going to get, I'm a tither. I'm obeying God. I'm trusting God. I'm serving in the house of God. I'm being faithful. You know what? Everything that has my name on it, get your hands off of it right now. I command the finances and the supply to come from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Because when you understand the covenant of God, and when you understand that you're practicing the covenant of God and that you're living in the covenant of God and you're not holding anything back from God, you're going to start getting angry. Like, wait a minute, God doesn't lie. So if there's something that's not adding up, 
that either I need to align myself or there's a thief that's getting in my house. And you start doing whatever it is that you have to do to get him out. So that's why I'm teaching aggressively on this. As Paul said, not for my sake, but because I want the blessing to come into your home. And I want the blessing to come into your family. So for you to be able to say 2018 has been the most prosperous year of my life. Not just in finances, but in relationship with God. In family relationships. In everything that you touch. That you would be able to be in health and prosper even as your soul prospers. Okay? And so he's basically saying to them, look, you've been doing wrong. But if you turn back to me, I'll turn back to you. So that's the first thing. Don't worry about, well, Pastor Joanne, I owe God about $633 in tithes because I've been running short and I haven't been able to pay my tithes. So, so I'm not even going to start because I, I'm, I'm, in the, I'm in the hole. I owe God. You know what? He said, forget it. Return to me and I'll return to you. Just that simple. Do something different today. Decide from today on, I'm going to be faithful in my giving and in my tithing because I want to be in covenant with God. It's just that simple. It's just that it's not a bill. <laughs> He's not going to come and repo. You know what I'm saying? Like, you have to know the heart of God. He just wants us to grow and he wants us to trust him. So verse 8 says, Will a man rob God, yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what have we robbed you? In tithes and offering. And it says, you're cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. He's not saying, I'm cursing you. God is not saying, I'm going to curse you. What he's saying is, you're cursed with a curse. In other words, I gave you tithe and I gave you your offering in order for you to be able to break the curse of poverty that entered into the Garden of Eden when sin showed up. So you're cursed with a curse because you're not using your, your oh man, what is it called? Okay, have you ever watched any, any kind of those movies where it's like, um, I think one of them was called an like Outbreak. And it was just like the disease was jumping from person to person and people were dying left and right. And then they had found an antidote. And so they found the antidote. And then once the people started taking the antidote, then they stopped dying. It's the same thing. If you're not using the antidote of your tithe and your offerings and your holy lifestyle, then the sickness and the curse of poverty will chase you. No matter how much you try to prosper, no matter how much you try to hustle. Because the truth of the matter is, is that now you live in the kingdom of God. So when you live in the kingdom of God, now you have to live by the rules of the kingdom of God. You can't come into the kingdom of God trying to live according to the rule of your hustle of what you did when you weren't saved. You were in a different kingdom. I'm already preaching. We just need to Thank you, Holy Ghost. So you can't bring your worldly hustle into the kingdom of God thinking that it's going to work. Because it's opposite. In the kingdom of God, uh, he says, give, and it shall be given unto you. In the kingdom of darkness, it says, take everything that you can take and run over whoever you have to run over to give it. In the kingdom of God, he says, humble yourself and you will be exalted. And in the kingdom of darkness, it says what? Be arrogant, be proud, and you'll go far. See? It's opposite. So when you're operating in the kingdom of God, you have to learn how to operate according to the heart of God. So he's saying, you're cursed with a curse because you're not taking the antidote. You're not taking the medicine that I've given you to defeat the spirit of poverty and of lack. Okay? Verse 10. And then it says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. So what is my house? The house of the Lord. Yes, you're the house of the Lord. But God created this system, one, for your prosperity, but two, for the advancement of the gospel. Okay? So God created this economic kingdom system, one, for you to be able to be prosperous individually, as an individual and as a family. But then he also set up this economic kingdom system in order for his gospel to be able to continue. So for there to be food in his house means you're, 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 you're fulfilling your responsibility as a believer and as a follower of Jesus Christ to say, I want the doors to be open when people come, that there be a place that they can be discipled, that they can learn, that they can grow in the kingdom of God. The same way that I'm blessed by the worship, I want somebody else to be blessed by the worship. I want us to be able to come together and be able to fellowship and build up each other. That's what I desire. And so when you have a heart for God, he says, okay, then be about my house. And when you say, God, I will bring to you my tithe and my offering, he blesses you. But then also, you're being used to move and propel the kingdom of God forward. Okay? 
It was never designed to be a get rich quick scheme for pastors. Or, well, I don't want, I can't find a job, so I think I'll open a church. This is not a career, it's a calling. Okay, it's not a career choice, it's a calling. You have to be willing to give your life for the sheep. That's the type of commitment that God wants. So he says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and try me now in this. Test me. Test me. Be, uh, be committed in this and test me. Watch and see, said the Lord, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. So he's saying the key of your life because some verses before, it talks about them returning to God in holiness. So your holy life and your giving, your tithes and your offering, test me now in this and watch how your obedience and what I'm asking you to do will open up the windows of heaven. You will prosper when you don't even know where it's coming from. People will bless you with things. People will bless you with opportunities, uh, favor, open doors, businesses, books. I mean, so many things that you'll know that you know that you know this was nothing but God. That opened this door for me. And I, and then this is the wonderful thing. You go to verse 11. It says, and I, the Lord is speaking. He said, and I will rebuke. Yeah. I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. That means when you're not tithing and you're not bringing your offering, there is somebody eating up your harvest. There's somebody that is eating up and consuming what belongs to you. The blessings that God has set apart for you. There's one that comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. But your tithe and your offering and your holy lifestyle, it is insurance in the, in the, in the spirit. It's an insurance to keep what belongs to you safe. Okay? Which means that when the enemy comes to devour what belongs to you, the Lord himself, he didn't say, I'll send an angel. He said, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. You don't even have to rebuke him yourself. I will come and I will stand in front of the devourer and I will say, oh no, you don't touch what belongs to Heath and Virginia. Oh no, you don't touch, you don't touch what belongs to Christina. You don't, uh-uh, get out of here, devourer. This property, this harvest is protected. Yes. That's what your tithe and your offering does. The problem in the church is that because pastors don't have a revelation of the kingdom of God and the way the kingdom of God works, then they try to manipulate it because they're stressed out about paying the bills and keeping the doors open. You see what I'm saying? But when you engage God, even from a pastoral standpoint, and you stand by faith and you do things with a pure heart, not for your own advancement, but for the advancement of the people and the advancement of the kingdom. Let me tell you, God will be faithful to his word and God will provide everything that is needed and God will send supply from Mars if he has to. Because he said, test me now in this. That's why as a church we tithe. Because I'm testing God in this. I'm saying, God, I test you in this to see if you will not open up the windows of heaven over rain, fire, church, and pour out blessing that we have no room to receive. Look at this. He said, I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground. Nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. Verse 12. And all nations will call you blessed. For you will be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. That's the covenant of the tithe. Well, the tithe is of the law. Do you realize that who was it? Abraham gave a tithe of everything that he owned to King Melchizedek, who is an Old Testament uh, apparition of Jesus. He gave his tithe to Melchizedek before the law even existed. The tithe is not law. The tithe is grace. The tithe is power. The tithe is prosperity. The tithe is an antidote. The tithe is, is advancement. It is faith. It is believing God. And that's what you bring when you put, you grab that envelope and you say, God, I will test you now in this. And I will watch you 
take care of my children. I will watch you set aside a scholarship for them even though I don't know where it's coming from. But by the time they get to college, they will not have student loans. I declare in the name of Jesus that healing will be in my house. I declare that I will not, I mean, just imagine all the areas that God is rebuking the devourer. We have no idea. But when we get to the other side, we'll know. And we'll be grateful. Amen? So with that in mind, let's prepare and let's give to the Lord our tithe and our offering in joy and in understanding that this is power. This is not money. It is power that you're holding in your hand. And once again, like I always tell you, it's not about what the amount is. It's about doing what God said do. Okay? So if you need an envelope, raise your hand. We're still waiting for our new envelopes. They're very, very nice, but I just don't know what is taking them so long to get here. So I encourage you to use the push pay tonight, okay? Push pay, you can text Rainfire, one word, Rainfire, to 77977. So you open up your text message in the phone number, you put 77977 in the message you write, Rainfire, one word, you hit send, and then it will send you back a link for you to be able to sow and give, all right? And also, if you're watching online, you can go to the website, rainfirechurch.org, okay? And when you're ready to do that, I want you to just stand up to your feet. When you are ready to do that, I want you to stand up to your feet. Thank you, Lord. I want you to stand up to your feet. Thank you, Father. Father, we worship you with our giving. 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 Thank you for giving us the strength to work. Thank you for giving us the ability to prosper. Thank you for prospering the work of our hands. Thank you, Father God, for opening doors for us and giving us the opportunity, Father God, to destroy the spirit of lack. Thank you for giving us a way to destroy the spirit of lack. Thank you for the revelation and the anointing of kingdom prosperity that you are releasing in every home that is represented here, Father. I thank you right now that you are releasing, God, on every business, on every marriage, on every home, on every uh, bank account, Father God, on every uh, investment account, on every 401k. God, I thank you, God, that our barns will be full, that there will be plenty, and that we will be amazing and wonderful stewards of what you place in our hands, God. And so we thank you right now, even as we release our seed into kingdom ground, we say this, say after me, say, seed, seed. in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus. I, release you I release you into the kingdom, into the kingdom. Trusting, trusting and knowing, and knowing that, you're that you're not leaving my life, but you're going into my future to prepare harvest for me when I need it in God's perfect time. Amen. 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 Miss Margaret, if you will come, I release you, those of you that have an envelope to sow and to give. And I just bless you in the name of Jesus. I bless you as you come. 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 Father, bless your people. Bless your people as they respond to your word, as they respond to your heart. Bless your people, Father, right now in the name of Jesus. Prosper your people. Father God, teach us faith in this area. Teach us faith in this area. Teach us faith in this area, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's thank God for the opportunity to worship God in our giving. I want us to be a house that gets excited about sowing and giving, not just because it's emotional and we got an upbeat song, but because we know what it means. We know what it means, okay? Um, let me see here. So we have been trying something new at Rainfire Church, and we have been doing small groups on Tuesdays. How many of you are enjoying... The small groups on Tuesdays. Okay, so I'm going to do something a little bit different. Um, Pink, I want you to come here. Come here, baby girl. I want you to come. Um, Mr. Anton, I want you to come. Uh, let's see, who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Uh, Ms. Latez, I'm going to ask you to come. And so we have several different groups. And so for the people that are here in Georgia, we want to really encourage you. I know you're watching on Periscope and you're still at home in your pajamas. But you need to start coming out to the small groups because the small groups are on fire. Man. Okay? And we're just growing. Like you just feel the unity, you feel the love, and you feel the growth. And so right now we have New Believers small group, we have Millennial small group, we have the Women's small group, we have Men's small group, we have Marriage small group, we have, what else? Um, Single small group. 
the children uh, with the choir, the youth small group. And so we have a group for everybody. And it's a great and amazing just way to just connect and grow and grow. And so I'm going to hand you the microphone first. And just in three minutes, I want you to talk a little bit about what your experience has been sharing with the women's group. You know, you're a very wonderful, active part of the women's group. And just kind of just share a little bit of what, what has it meant for you? Being a part of the women's group, it is really empowering um, to be with a group of women that we all touch and agree on so many different levels in life. So for me, it's just overwhelming with joy. And I just love, I love the sisterhood that we all have started. You know, every morning we get a text where we, somebody is given um, glory to God in embracing our spirits yeah. to do better that day. So it's amazing. Yeah. So she's a part of the women's group. I want you to talk to us a little bit about what's happening with the singles group. Yeah. And then we're going to go to the married group. Praise the Lord, everybody. So I'm uh, Minister Latez, and I'm a part of the singles group, and the singles group is absolutely phenomenal. I'm not saying it just because I'm a part of it. <laughs> but we, we've been having so much fun um, really getting in God's presence to understand what he wants from us in this particular season, understanding um, his promises to us in his word in a real practical way, but also it's been a safe environment for us to bond. Like she said, as sisters, um, build some real relationships, walk together um, through the ups and downs of life, um, understanding ourselves better. It's a safe place to drop everything in the bucket, let God help us deal with it, get the healing and deliverance, and then get ready for where God's taking us. So it's been an amazing journey from day one until now. I think the ladies are enjoying themselves. Are you enjoying yourselves, ladies? Yes. 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 It's amazing. So I hope you guys, if you haven't been able to come on Tuesday and you're single, you really want to connect to the singles group. We are a tight-knit group of ladies who are moving forward in God. And God's doing some amazing things here at Rainfire Church in all of our lives. So we hope to see you guys come out. Awesome. Awesome. Let's praise God for that. Amen. Amen. Antoine Jackson, um, my wife and I, Natalie, along with um, he and Miss B, uh, we're over the marriage ministry. Um, and as Brother Heath said, the marriage ministry, the training wheels are off. Woo, come on. We're clear for takeoff. <laughs> um, we've had some awesome moments within um, the marriage ministry to the point of um, some of them asked um, if we could have another night since you know we weren't able to meet tonight. Um, so they, they're excited. Um, we're excited about what the Lord is doing in our ministry because. Um, you know, we've made a commitment to save marriages. Amen. Um, we have a couple of, 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 of members here tonight. Um, are you guys enjoying what we're doing in? Yeah. Um, you know, you know, we have, um, you know, we say marriage ministry, but we do have some couples who, um, you know, one spouse is there um, for whatever reason, okay. and that's okay. You know, don't 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 not come just because your husband, your wife is not able to be there. Still come because what you what's going to be poured into you. You know, you're going to walk before that missing spouse, come on. and they're going to see the glory of the Lord upon you, and they're going to be convicted. They're going to be convicted. They're going to be convicted, and they're going to be drawn to come and be a part of what you're doing because they see how you're walking before them. Yeah. And it's because we have made the commitment to be naked yeah. and unashamed. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Right, I want to go be part of that small group. But I got my small group. So as you can see, if you have not been a part of the small groups, you're really missing out. This church is about discipleship, okay? When you walk in through the front doors, what does it say? It says, preparing a generation for the coming of the king through discipleship. Why? Because when you go to the doctor and they tell you you're dying of cancer, hype ain't gonna get it. Yeah. It's just really not. When you're on the verge of suicide because you just found out you're pregnant and you're not married and you don't want to be ashamed, hype 
or lights and all that kind of stuff is just not going to do it. What's going to uphold you in the day of the storm is if your foundation is the rock. And that rock is Jesus. And who is Jesus? Jesus is the living word. So yes, we know how to go deep and we know how to worship and we know how to fall out in the presence of God. We know how to lay hands on people and people get healed. And we know how to run around and we know how to shout and we know how to do all of those things. And those are wonderful, refreshing moments in the presence of God. But what really, really helps you to stand when there's no organ, when there's no choir, when there's no shouting, it's the word of God that is deposited within you that you're building your life on. Okay? And right, that's Jesus. Yeah. Because he's the living word. Okay? So let's go very quickly because it's already 751. Wow. So Genesis 22nd. I won't be before you long tonight. Okay, let's go to Genesis 22nd. So everybody has their small groups that's going on. My small group is online. I didn't want our online family to feel left out because they were not able to be a part of the small groups. So I continue to teach them online because they're a part of our church, they're a part of this family. And so I wanted them to know that we care about them being a part of Rain Fire Church and I wanted to be able to serve them. And so what God placed on my heart, the series that I'm doing is called Prosper God's Way. Okay, so I encourage you, um, if you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do that. Go to YouTube and subscribe, find Joanne Rosario Condry and subscribe so that when we post videos of the Power Prayer Call or of whatever, that you're able to watch them and remain connected. That's how you can stay connected to your pastor is by hearing, okay? My sheep hear my voice Amen. and they follow and they come. And so if you consider yourself to be a sheep of this house, you have to keep your ear to the pastor, okay? Don't listen to everybody under the sun. I know that sounds funny, but if you sit up and you listen to everybody that's on TBN, you're going to be going in 50 different <coughs> spiritual directions. Okay? Oh, I should be doing this Daniel fast. Oh, maybe I should be just fasting water. Oh, maybe I need to be on this kind of fast. Okay, well, maybe I need to uh, be part of this. And you're going every which way because everybody is called to a different tribe. You got to know your tribe. And it's not being exclusive. We're not being exclusive. It's an issue of I'm going in this direction and I feel called to this house and this ministry. So I have to trust that Pastor Corey and Pastor Julian have on the inside of them the word for where I'm going. And so there are other people that you will hear that you hear the same sound. You feel the same way in your spirit as you do when you hear Pastor Corey and Pastor Joanne. So you know in your spirit, okay, this is somebody who I can vibe with. Because you know we're in the same tribe, in the spirit. You can feel that they're going in the same direction. But, but you can't just sit and just eat at everybody's table because you're going to get spiritual indigestion. Does that make sense? Okay. Because there are different tribes in the body of Christ. And everybody teaches differently based on the needs of their tribe. Okay? In the Old Testament, you had the workers of gold. In the Old Testament, you had the Levites. In the Old Testament, you had the worshipers. In the Old Testament, you had the ones that worked with wood, and they were in different tribes. You couldn't take a worshiper and put him over here with the workers of wood and expect them to be able to know what to do because over here, I'm created to worship, but you're trying to, you're trying to put me in the wood carving tribe. That's not what I do. That's not what I'm called to do. And so it brings confusion. And I don't want you to be spiritually confused. I want you to be focused. I want you to know where you're going, okay? Like a laser, focused, like a laser, okay? So be selective, be led by the spirit. Be led by the spirit. So during the week, after you come, take a moment to go back and listen to the series that we're talking about, Cross for God's Way, because it's gonna help you to remain connected with me and what it is that I feel like God is saying for this house, okay? And so the first week we talked about the covenant and understanding covenant. The second week we talked about consecration. The third week we talked about dedication with God. The, uh, the, the, the fourth week we talked about affection for the house of God. Affection for the house of God. But tonight we're going to talk about addiction. Somebody say addiction. addiction. Your prosperity in the kingdom of God does not start with the money that you drop in the bucket. Okay? It begins with your internal posture. It begins with your attitude. It begins with your heart. It begins with your, with your disposition toward God. Okay? There are many times where we would rather give God our 10% and not be obedient. It's okay if you get quiet. I'm it's true. I would, rather, I would rather give you God a large offering. He's just like, I don't want burnt offerings. If you can't give me your obedience, I don't want your burnt offerings. 
I don't desire a burnt offerings. What I desire is you. What I desire is your heart. What I desire is your obedience, okay? So when you think about addiction, think about addiction, and think about somebody who's addicted to something, okay? Be it drugs, be it alcohol, will they trade in their mama for some drugs if they're addicted? Will they steal from their daddy if they're addicted? Will they go out and sell their body because they're trying to get that next fix? Because they're addicted. There's a portion and there's an element of that within the kingdom of God that has to become real to us if we want to walk in kingdom prosperity and we really truly want to be close to God and be able to abide and flow with him. There has to be, you have to be consecrated. You have to be dedicated. You have to love him and be affectionate towards him. But then there has to come a place where there's an addiction. There's an addiction for him. I Joanne, I don't understand what you're talking about. Okay, let's go to the Bible. Let's go to the Bible. And my title tonight is, How Far Are You Willing to Go for God? How far are you willing to go for God? But what does this have to do with prosperity? What does this say? This doesn't have anything to do with prosperity. Tell me how I can give and put in $5 and then get $500 in two weeks. No, this is not, this is not a multi-level. <laughs> right, this is not a, you know, this is not a pyramid. This is not the lottery. We're talking about the kingdom of God. Okay, the kingdom of God. So we're going to talk about Abraham. Now it came to pass, verse 1, chapter 22, Genesis 22, verse 1. Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham. Let's just stop right there. Let's just stop right there. It said after these things. Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham. What do you mean after these things you tested Abraham? You've already told him to leave his house. He's left his family behind. He's gone to, to, to be uh, in a land that he does not know. He left everything that was familiar with him behind. He has gone into the wilderness. He's trying to follow this God that he does not know and who's just revealing himself. He's gone through this land and that land. He's almost died. He goes through this situation with Sarah where a king wants her and he's just like, pretend you're my sister. And then he goes through having Ishmael and he goes through the problem. I mean, he goes through all of these things. And you're saying, after all these things, God... Now decide, I thought he'd been tested. Yeah. Hasn't everything else that he's been through been tested? But it's like God was showing me, yes, you have the kindergarten test and the first grade test and the second grade test and the fifth grade test and the eighth grade test. But there comes a moment where you're working on your dissertation. This was his dissertation test. Does that make sense? So after he had been through all of that, then God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. Then he said, take now your son, your only son, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. Now hold up, God. We know the story. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I waited something like 25 years for this promise. I messed up and I slept with somebody and I had another child. You shut that whole thing down. You finally give me the son. It was impossible. Sarah's womb was like dead. She probably was not even in childbearing years is what the Bible tells us. Abraham's body was as dead. But somehow, God made all of those things work, and here she is pregnant. No epidural back in the day, boo. Like, she, she did that like a real boss. Like, in the wilderness somewhere, ain't no hospital, there's no epidural, there's no ice chips. I mean, like, she, she, that's Holy Ghost strength. Because I remember when it was my turn, I was like, where, 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 where did they put the shot? Because the pain was so horrible. Okay, but God, so they go through all of this to receive the promise, but then God says, sacrifice the promise. Mm, Jesus. Okay, I try to teach you and preach to you a real gospel. Amen. I don't want to play. I don't want to trick you. I don't want to make it a girl. You're going to get to your next level and all is going to be well and you're going to shout and dance and you ain't never going to cry not another day in your life and go ahead and shout out, shout out. And then you walk out the door. <laughs> And here you go and get hit, and you're like, what's wrong with me? Nothing's wrong with you. Yeah, you may 
might have been delivered the promise, but that doesn't mean that that is not going to be tested. Because even in him receiving the promise, God needed to know after everything that you've been through, if you had to choose between me and the promise, will you choose me? Right. We're talking about prospering God's way. If you have to choose between the promise, if you have to choose between the, me and the prosperity, if you have to choose between me and fame, if you have to choose between me and money, if you have to choose between me and everybody liking you and everybody being your friend, will you choose me? Will you choose me? See, that's what this thing is all about. Will you choose me over everything and over everyone? Okay, only somebody that is addicted is willing to choose that thing that they're addicted over more than anything else in the world. I'm trying to paint a picture for you. So Abraham, verse 3, rose early in the morning. He did not even procrastinate. God spoke that night. The next morning he got up early. Saddled his donkey, took two of his young men with him. Okay, hold on. I lost my place. Okay. He rose early, took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and he split the wood for the burnt offering. So here he is actively being obedient and doing the work of what God has asked him to do. Split the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Verse 4, look at this. Then on the third day, somebody say the third day. The third day. Did he get up and ask Sarah, Sarah, this is what the Lord told me. What do you think about this? Mm -mm. Sarah would have fought him. Okay? She would have been like, you must be crazy. As long as I have been waiting for my son. Okay? As long as I have been waiting for my promise. You're going to tell me that the God that promised this child to us is now trying to kill him? I will kill you first. <laughs> That's why he got up early. Because he had to get out of there before Sarah woke up. She probably woke up in a panic, not knowing what was going on. He traveled three days and three nights. You don't think that on the way he was thinking about it? You don't think that during those three days he wondered, was I imagining it? Did God really tell me to do this? He had plenty of time to turn around. He had plenty of time to change his mind. But yet within him, there was something that was so solid. There was this addiction. There was this commitment. There was this dedication. There was this love within him that said, you know what? If, he, if I'm crazy, then let me be crazy. But the same voice that I heard tell me that this child would belong to me is the same voice that I heard tell me that now I have to sacrifice this promise. And I have to just believe some way, somehow, that even in Hebrews, I believe it is, says that if I burn him, that from the ashes the Lord would raise him up. See, that's the faith that he had. He had faith to believe that even if he set that boy on fire, y'all not hearing me, y'all don't understand what is going on in this picture. If he sacrificed that boy and he set him on fire, that God was powerful enough. See, because he knew, oh my he knew that within his child was the seed of the promise of what God had shown him. He knew that when God said to him, Abraham, look at the stars of the sky. He gave him vision. He gave him something to look at for him to be able to understand what God was talking about. He gave him a vision board. He said, look at the stars of the sky. We thought vision boards was a new thing. It ain't. He said, look at the sand. When you go to the beach, look at the sand. Can you count? Can you count the sin? He gave him something that he could look at so that he could visualize the future, so he could visualize the promise and what he could see with his eyes allowed faith to arise in his heart. And he knew that he knew that he knew that he knew that inside that boy was the seed of all of the stars in the sky and all of the grains of sand all across the, the all of the beaches of the world. And he said, if God has to raise him up from the dead, I know that God will do it because he promised me Three days, three nights, he is journeying, he is walking, and I'm sure Isaac was like, Daddy, where are we going? Well, what are we doing? I'm hungry. Can we get some McDonald's? Well, why do we got to go so far? I mean, 
shouldn't take this long to get on there yet. I don't know how, how old this boy was, but three days, and consistently for those three days, he did not turn back. Why? Because of his heart. Okay? God loves everyone the same. God loves everyone the same. But, but everybody doesn't move God the same. That's it. Do you understand what I'm saying? God loves every one of us the same. He loves the murderer. He loves the pedophile. He loves the thief. He loves the religious person. He loves the preacher. He loves the apostle. He loves us all the same. But we don't all move him the same way. Okay? So if you have two children and they both came from your womb, you love them with all your heart. But one is rebellious, one spits in your face, one smacks you, one throws tantrums and they throw themselves on the floor when you give them an instruction. But then over here you have another child that's, yes ma'am, no ma'am, yes sir, no sir. And they go in and they clean their room and they go in and they do what you ask them to do. They're obedient. And when you're feeling sick, they go out, mommy, can I help you? Mommy, do you need a tissue? You see that this child gives themselves to you. When it comes time to cut that pie, you don't think that you're going to cut just a little bit bigger slice for the one that's obedient than for the one that is your eternal headache? Does that make sense? You still gonna give them both pot, but this one over here just might have just an extra half inch more. Because you move my heart. Because you're obedient. You don't give me a hard time like your knucklehead brother. You help me, and I'm grateful. You see what I'm saying? God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. He's a rewarder. He's a rewarder. So he goes to the mountain three days. And on the third day, verse 4, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off. He had been traveling three days and he looked up and it was still far. I don't know if I would have made it. Verse 5, and Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey. I don't want anybody trying to talk me out of what I'm getting ready to do. Come on, come on. Stay here with the donkey and the lad and I will go yonder and worship. And we. That's it. That's it. Do you see that? And we will come back to you. I will run around this church. Now do you see why he's called the father of faith? Because he was addicted to God. He was dedicated to God. He was consecrated to God. And his most prized relationship, his most precious thing that he had waited for for so long, he did not allow Isaac to become his idol. See, a lot of times we believe God, well, I want to be married, and I want to be married, and I want to be married. And then when God blesses you with a spouse, suddenly you are making that person God, and you're no longer serving Jehovah God because you're trying to cater to this person in the flesh. Right. Now they've become your idol, and they become your God, as opposed to saying, yes, I love you, spouse, and yes, I will serve you, but I cannot serve you above my service to the Lord. Yes. Well, stay home from church. I'm sorry. I will have your dinner ready before it's time to go to church. Do you need me to wash anything for you? Are you good? Do you need a TV dinner? Do you want me to rub your feet? Whatever you need. But once 6.30 comes, I love you with all my heart. But from 7 to 8.30, my time belongs to God. Yes. See, whatever you compromise, you'll lose. That's right. Whatever you put before God, you'll lose. Right. If you idolize that relationship and put that relationship before God, you'll lose it. If you idolize those children, and you know I have an issue with this. We're so committed to their sports schedule, but we can't bring them to church on a Tuesday because they got to be in the bed, fall asleep on, on the pew. Come on. Yeah. Come on. And learn to love God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. Because yes. once you get older, I need for something to have seeped in. Yes. Yes. And soccer ain't going to do it. Yes. Baseball ain't going to get you there. Yes. Let's choose a sport that does not conflict with being the house of God because God should always come first. You will lose those children if you don't teach them to love God and honor God and live for God. You will lose them. Man, I fought tooth and nail because I didn't get to do this and that and whatever. But he, I, here I am at 40-something years old and I'm, I'm serving the Lord with all my heart, my soul, and my mind. Why? Because I was one of those babies that was on the blanket, on the floor, during all-night prayer. 
waking up with a crook in my neck because the floor was real hard. But while I was sleeping, some way, somehow, the Holy Spirit was doing a work in me and preparing me for 2018. Train up a child in a way that he should go. And when they're older, they will not depart. They will not depart. He said, we will come back to you. Verse 6, so Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering, laid it on Isaac, his son. He took the fire in his hand and the knife, and the two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, my father. And he said, here I am, my son. Then he said, look, the fire, the wood, but there, where is the lamb for a burnt offering? He knew what worship was supposed to look like. And Abraham said, my son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. I'm going to move quickly through these. So the two of them went together, verse 9. Then they came to the place of which God told them. And Abraham built an altar there, placed the wood in order. He bound Isaac, his son, laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. I'm going to do what you want me to do. I'm going to trust you even though I don't get it and I don't see it. I will go as far as you need me to go. If this is what you ask of me, then I'll do it. If I have to give up my most prized possession, how far are you willing to go for God? How committed is committed? How dedicated is dedicated? How, how far will you allow your addiction to please him, to consume your heart? We're not talking about stale Christianity. We're talking about kingdom. We're talking about addiction. We're talking about loving God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. And we see an example of what this looks like. Now, I'm not telling you to go take your child and put them in the oven. That's not what I'm saying. I believe this was a one-time experience. God had to prove something. God had to show something. But there will be other areas in your life where God is saying, will you be willing to put me first? Yes, yes, yes. As a person who is addicted to drugs, are you willing to turn your back on mother, on father, on houses, on land, on brothers, on sister, on promotions? Are you willing to turn your back on whoever it may be when they're not saying what I'm saying? Well, I can't go into ministry. I was having a conversation with one of our mentees, and her grandfather was a pastor. And God had prophetically spoken to her grandfather through my dad and had said to him, it is your time to go into full-time ministry. God wants you to walk away from your job. This was at least 20 years ago. And God prophetically spoke to him through my dad, said, God is saying it's time for you to walk away from your job. And so when he went back to his city, he went and he walked away from his job. And he had a very good job and he was making very good money in that season and in that time. His wife got mad. How are we going to live? That man is crazy. I don't know what you're trying to do. And she pressured him and pressured him and pressured him and pressured him until he went back on his decision and went back to work. And a year later, he was dead. Because he pushed he allowed his wife to push him into her will, which pushed him out of God's will. Wow. And the enemy was able to come in and cut his life short. Thank God that his legacy is living in his children. But the church that he worked for, I mean, it just turned into a mess. It turned into a mess. Who knows if he would still have been alive. If he had done what God told him to do and stood his ground, even with his wife, to say, you know what? I know that I know this is what God is saying. And if God is calling me to walk away from this job, then God will provide. We may go through hard times, but God will provide. That's the reason why when Corey came to me and he said to me, I heard God speak to me. And he said, walk away from the radio. I said, if that's what God said, then go for it. When I called my mother and I told her what God had said, she cried. Because she went through the same experience with my dad. I was one month old, and he came in and said, I, I quit my job today because God said so. And they went through, but God was faithful. Amen. I never had insurance until I was an adult. We were poor, and I didn't even know it. Because groceries would show up, and the lunch lady that worked at, 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 at the public school would come to church with bags of food from leftover uh, from the public school lunches. God always provided and my dad is 72 years old, and he's still pastoring three locations and overseeing 
other churches around the world and he preaches eight times a week and three times on Sunday and in perfect health, prosperous, full of joy, winning people to Jesus, baptizing hundreds, raising up spiritual sons and daughters all over the world. Because he was willing to walk away from a salary in 1974 Jesus. when God said so. How far are you willing to go? How far are you willing to go to prosper God's way? This is what we're talking about. Jesus. But the angel of the Lord, verse 11, called to him from heaven and said, Abraham! Abraham. So he said, here I am. And he said, do not let your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. Virginia, now I know that you fear God because you were willing to walk away from corporate America and join your husband. Christina, now I know that you fear the Lord because you're willing to Witness to people when you're not even sure if this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And now I know that you fear the Lord because you were willing to leave the big position at the big church to go help a little small church because it's what I told you to do. Now I know that you fear the Lord because you walked away from that relationship even though he was fine and he was 6'5 and he had money and on the outside he looked like all the right things but on the inside you knew my spirit was saying this is not what I have for you. Now I know that you honor me. Now I know that you're addicted to me. Now I know that I'm first in your life. Now I know that you love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, your strength, your emotions, the fiber in your being. That you love me and I'm in the right position in your life. Now I know that you are completely and totally committed to this relationship so we don't need a prenup. Come on, come on, come on. Am I making sense to anybody? So sometimes God will have a prenup because he's like, you know what? Sometimes you're with me, sometimes you drop me. So I'm going to bless you, but I'm going to put you on a, a on, you're going to get a, what is it? You're going to get like a, like a stipend. You're going to get a per diem. Okay? You're going to get enough to be able to just eat. And that's it. But when you are addicted, when you're consecrated, when you're dedicated, when you will give anything for him. He will open up his treasure to you. And you will overflow in every area. Look at this, verse 13. I'm almost done. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and there behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by its horn. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place the Lord will provide. See, because that's the thing, that when you're willing to sacrifice whatever he asks you for, he will turn around and bring provision. He will love you. You will give up that one counterfeit relationship, but then he will bring you a husband that is 20 times better than anybody you ever dated. Yeah. Yeah. You will give up that job and then God will turn around and he will give you a job that has a, a matching 401k and better insurance and better hours so you don't have to miss church. Whatever it is that you say, yes, God, I'll give it to you and I'll sacrifice it for you. What the Lord will do is he will provide something that's even better than what you gave up out of obedience. This is what it is to prosper God's way. Corey is 500 times better than any man I've ever dated and fine too. <laughs> he is because I was willing to walk away I was three months from getting married I had the dress bought I had the ring on my finger we had bought a house we were ready invitations were out people were coming and I wasn't even sure and I had enough guts to say God, 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 God if, 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 if this is not your will Please, 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 I don't even want to say it. Please give me a sign. When everything was going so wrong, I knew I had to make a decision. The crazy thing is I wasn't even bold enough to make the decision, so I said, the wedding is postponed. And man, God made that thing fall apart so terribly. But when I tell you now, I cried a million tears, and I went down to a size two because I couldn't sleep and I couldn't eat, and I was so depressed. But I tell you now, I'm so thankful. Woo, I dodged the bullet out of me. 
Not because he's a bad person, but because he wasn't the right person for me. And I'm going to drop the mic on that one. Okay? Verse 15. Then the, Lord, the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son. Here it goes. Blessing, I will bless you. And multiplying, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore. And your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Because you have obeyed my voice. We want to prosper God's way. We have to really have an honest conversation with ourselves and say, okay, God, how far am I really, will, really willing to go in obedience when it comes to our relationship? And based on that, God is going to begin to release to you his blessing, his prosperity, and his overflow. Why? Because he's looking for people that are consecrated, yes. He's looking for people that are dedicated, yes. He's looking for people that, that have affection and love for him. But he is looking for people that are addicted Amen. to him. I just want to please you. Amen. Wherever you want me to go, I'll go. Whatever you want me to give, I'll give. Whatever you want me to do, I'll do to where he really is number one in your life. And you will see him move on your behalf like you have no idea. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Would you bow your heads with me tonight? God, I thank you. I thank you for the boldness that you give me to tell it honestly the way I see it in your word. Because you said that in the last days you would pour out your spirit upon our flesh. God, you said that the latter rain would be greater than the former rain. Yes. And so I thank you, God, that even through this ministry, God, you are raising up a people that are consecrated, are dedicated, in love, and addicted to you. That you would be number one above anything and above anyone. Mm -hmm. That is who we want to be, and that is who you desire because when you see that type of addiction, when you see that type of commitment and obedience in us, there really is nothing that you will withhold from us because you will feel like you can totally trust us. We want you to feel like you can trust us. So Holy Spirit, show us, teach us, and bring us to that place of undying devotion, addiction, consecration, dedication, affection, love, surrender, obedience. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 I pray that you were blessed by the word tonight. Amen. Let's just stand up to our feet as we get ready to go. And as I pray for you and as I bless you tonight, God is looking for you. God is looking for you. He's looking for me. Something just a little bit differently. Would you grab the hand of the person that is close to you and just begin to bless them? Just begin to just speak life over them. Begin to bless them. You can reach behind you, reach in front of you, to the side of you. Father, I thank you. I thank you for those that are connected to this house, online, here in the city. And I ask God that you would complete the work that you're starting in us. Complete the work that you're starting in us. Bring us to that level of commitment. Bring us to that level of addiction, of dedication, of consecration. God, that, that we would totally understand that next level of devotion so that you can trust us with your power. You can trust us with your influence. You can trust us with your authority. You can trust us with provision, with finances, with miracles. That you would truly be able to trust us knowing that we will not betray your trust. We ask, God, that you would draw us closer to your presence. And as we get ready to leave from this place, God, I bind every spirit of sickness. I bind every spirit of, of oh my gosh, of addiction to other things. 
I bind the addiction to inappropriate intimacy. I bind the addiction to pornography. I bind the addiction to gossip and lies and, and deception. I bind the addiction to alcohol. I bind the addiction to weed. I bind the addiction to any type of over-the-counter drugs. I bind every addiction that would try to, uh, to attach itself to your people. I confront it and I speak to it and I command it to loose and let go now in the name of Jesus and that the Holy Spirit himself would be so poured into every vessel that every addiction, every hindrance, every sin that so easily besets us, Father God, that it would be displaced and that the presence and the glory of God would just fill us so completely that, that your nature and your character would be deposited within us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. So as we go from this place, protect us. No accidents, no broken bones. We declare law, life, health, strength, and prosperity. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen? Amen. 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 I love you. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you, baby. Know that next Tuesday, we will be going back to our small group setup. So small group leaders, please make sure that you come prepared. And ready will be in the first week of February. And you do not want to miss Sunday because we have something very, very special for you on Sunday. I see you coming my way, Brother Heath. Oh, okay. I thought you had an announcement. All right, guys. I love you. I bless you. Have a great night. Sunday. 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 Look at your name and say Sunday. 11 a.m. Okay. I love you.